Um, now, the next topic I would like to cover in this video before I close, uh, here I go again. I scrolled too much. No, actually, I didn't scroll too much. I started rambling, and I already covered that. I covered that crap. I covered that crap. Um, uh -huh. The vegan diet is next. The vegan diet is getting very popular. Uh, this is for the vegan viewers and those that are not vegan who may be considering going vegan, going on the vegan diet. Uh, but mainly it's really for the vegan enthusiasts. Now, I'm not here to tell you to discontinue your vegan diet or any diet. Okay, that's not my job. I'm just here to tell you how to get healthy by getting rid of the 12 deadly foods. However, if there is a diet that is dangerous, like low cholesterol diet, low fat diet, if the diet is getting people sick and causing harm, I'm going to speak out against it. Okay. Now, having said that, I haven't come across any medical studies, articles, journals indicating veganism is a dangerous diet. Uh, no research yet. I couldn't find it. Perhaps there is. However, I didn't come across it. Um, I've seen many videos uh, from former vegans that became very ill after like six months to a year from the time they began to practice veganism. Now, I may have seen approximately 50 to 60 videos from ex-vegans giving their testimony. Most of them were stating veganism uh, did this to my body. This is what the vegan diet did to me. Um, I will address some of those symptoms and um, that they mentioned in their videos. About six months or, or more into the diet, some vegans stated that they were getting very ill. Now, if you are getting sick, you must ask yourselves, you got to ask yourself here, when you do research something like this, you got to ask yourself, is the vegan diet contributing to my illnesses and all of these symptoms that I'm experiencing? It could be. It could be possible. Many vegans will deny it and, and say it's not the vegan diet that's contributing to my illness. Again, maybe it is. All I'm saying is you should not dismiss that possibility. This is your health we're talking about here. Okay. You cannot dismiss that possibility. Again, anything is possible. Another question you need to ask, what are the ingredients in the vegan foods that I'm eating? Okay. Are these ingredients harmful? That's important, don't you think? The next question is even more important, and this is the critical one. How many nutrients are in vegan foods? That is important. Is it enough nutrients to sustain your health, to prevent diseases? Another question, and it's another important one, are the foods vegan consuming organic, gluten-free, and non-GMO? Especially non-GMO. Perhaps the vegans are eating too much GMO products and they're getting very ill. Again, it's a possibility. This is just hypothesis, man. You know, this is if, maybe, it's a possibility, okay? All I am saying that you need to speculate on this. Sit and think. Many former vegans in their testimony, uh, testimonial videos, uh, they stated that they were always constantly hungry. They were always eating. So if they're always hungry... I can only speculate that they are excessively and possibly consuming a lot of GMO foods and they're getting sick. That's a possibility. This is my opinion. I am aware that many vegans consume organic foods, and that's a good thing, but I don't think that they are conscientious about GMO food products. Vegans may be reading food packages and they see the word organic, However, organic does not mean gluten-free or non-GMO. It's possible vegans are consuming too much GMOs and that contains modified soy, modified cornstarch, and, modif and other modified ingredients. Like me, I was eating a lot of GMO foods and I didn't even know it because I had no idea what the heck GMO was. 
or what the heck gluten for that matter what the heck is gluten i didn't even know i'm just speculating that the vegans are consuming a lot of gmo foods now let's deal with this hunger this hunger issue why are many who were formerly vegans uh, that, that are practicing uh, vegan, that were practicing vegan, veganism, they were constantly getting hungry and they were always eating. There is a reason why vegans are constantly hungry and not only vegans, ladies and gentlemen. This happens to most people, even non-vegans. The reason why many people get hungry two hours later after eating a meal, does that happen to you? Did, did, did that ever happen to you? All right, you eat a large plate of lasagna or a McDonald's meal, and two hours later, you're hungry again. That was me. Every flipping two hours, I had to eat something, and I wasn't a vegan, okay? This happens to most people. I always said, every time I finish eating a meal, and I got hungry again, and two hours later, did somebody put marijuana in my hamburger because I'm hungry again? <laughs> you know? You know, cannabis triggers hunger, right? Uh, I never smoked marijuana. I never smoked it. I was a good little boy in the Bronx. We don't smoke marijuana here in the Bronx. We smoke angel dust. <laughs> I do a lot of reading, folks. For instance, I learned that the active ingredient, hydrocannabinol, uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, um, for short, THC, when THC hits part of the brain, it stimulates you to eat. Okay, that's how you get the munchies. Okay, I never smoked it. I read about the effects of marijuana. Okay, anyway, let's press on. This is not about smoking marijuana. You know why you get hungry every two hours, especially the vegans? Your body is starving for nutrients. It's craving for nutrients. Your body is nutritionally deficient from minerals, vitamins, amino acids, and fatty acids. Your body is begging you to fill it up. Fill it up with nutrients. Unfortunately, your body can't tell you, I need calcium. I need selenium. I need vitamin C. Wouldn't that be wonderful if your body and your brain can tell you, hey, I'm deficient in magnesium. I'm deficient in manganese. I am deficient in phosphorus. Fill me up. That would be awesome if the body can do that. This is why you're constantly hungry. You have a nutritional deficiency. That's all it is. That's the bottom line. The food that you are eating is lacking nutrients. In fact, all foods are lacking in many essential nutrients, including the vegan foods. Okay? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you and the vegans how they are nutritionally deficient and from their foods from their foods. Let's take a typical vegan breakfast, okay? Uh, many vegans, um, they eat tofu, right? I looked it up. That's like one of the most popular foods for a vegan, uh, which, by the way, it's made from soy, okay? Um, it's made from soybeans and soy milk. Something to think about, right? GMOs, remember? Rewind this video to the 10th deadliest food where I covered GMO. Perhaps vegans are consuming too much soy and it's genetically modified, not to mention that they are nutritionally deficient. Just a thought. Also, I read many articles that GMO food products contain a gene called epicyte. And this epicyte gene causes infertility in most women and men. I have watched ex-vegan videos, especially young women, who claim that they were on the vegan diet and they caught amenorrhea. Now, amenorrhea, not to be confused with um, menopause, amenorrhea is an abnormal cease of the menstrual cycle in women. All of, all of a sudden, it just stops. While they're young, while they're like 20, even 30-year-olds, they, uh, sometimes they think that they're going on menopause. That's not menopause. That's actually a, uh, it's a disease called amenorrhea. Look it up. Okay, your menstrual cycle all of a sudden stops. And it may have something to do with GMOs. Okay, you need to do a little more research on that. So, um, tofu has about 17 nutrients. 17, give or take. 
17 nutrients, vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, zinc. Let's add a cup of broccoli to that omelet, okay? A tofu omelet. We're talking about a tofu omelet. We're making a tofu omelet, and we're going to add broccoli to it. Broccoli has three nutrients that's not found in the tofu, okay? So that's about 20 nutrients in total for that breakfast, about 20 nutrients. How many essential nutrients does the body require to maintain its structure and to keep it fully healthy? 90. That means you, as a vegan, or anyone who eats this omelet, uh, can be anyone, you are missing 70 nutrients that the body requires. 70 essential nutrients are missing. You're going to have to make it up uh, those 70 nutrients with lunch and dinner. Guess what? Impossible. Not even with meat products, vegetable fruits, uh, plant foods, you are able to get all 90 essential nutrients. All essential nutrients are not present in our foods. It's not. You can thank modern farming for that catastrophe. Okay, I'll explain that later during this video. Even if you eat organic and you're not, get, you're not getting all the 90 essential nutrients, let me take this further. Let's take a look at the quantity or the dosage uh, for one of those nutrients, if you will. Let's take a look at vitamin C. There's a reason why I chose vitamin C. Broccoli contains approximately 8, 80, excuse me, 80 milligrams of vitamin C in about 150 grams of measurement per serving. 150 grams is about a cup of unfrozen chopped broccoli, give or take. I suck at math. So 80 milligrams of vitamin C, peg that number into your mind, 80 milligrams of vitamin C. Now, one cup of tofu contains 0.3 milligrams of vitamin C, three-tenths of a milligram, not even a full milligram. So now, if you're pretty good at math, I suck at math, if you're pretty good in basic math, okay, um, I, I always hated decimals, you know what, um, the, the total of the two, tofu and broccoli, is 80.3 milligrams. Let's round it off to the nearest whole number, 80. You're only getting 80 milligrams of vitamin C. Imagine that. Imagine if you didn't include the broccoli, then all you will be getting is 0.3 milligrams, three-tenths of a milligram. That's it. Only three-tenths of a milligram of vitamin C in your system. Don't you think you're going to get sick and catch some kind of disease that is caused by a deficiency of vitamin C? And there is a disease that is caused by a deficiency of vitamin C. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, you ingested the broccoli and the tofu, and hopefully you absorbed all 80 milligrams of vitamin C. That's another problem. You may not have absorbed all 80 milligrams of vitamin C because your body is suffering from inflammation from all that gluten that you were eating. Now, some people would say, oh, that's not bad. 80 milligrams, that's not bad at all. My, uh, my cholesterol medication is like 20 milligrams. That's four times the amount of my statin drugs that I take for my cholesterol. In fact, I think 80 milligrams of vitamin C is kind of high. And you can overdose on vitamin C. <laughs> How many people do you know overdose from taking vitamin C and, or from 80 milligrams of vitamin C? I take 2,600 milligrams of vitamin C every day. Okay? That's about 30 times the amount of that tofu breakfast, that tofu omelet. Okay? Now, I found an over-the-counter powder of vitamin C. It's a canister. And it indicated 5,000 milligrams per two scoops. Wow! Oh, my God, you're going to overdose on vitamin C. My God, I Padre Santo, 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C. You're going to die. <laughs> I researched this brand, and no one has died yet from taking 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C. I haven't seen any reports. In fact, I haven't, I haven't come across of any reports of anyone dying from an overdose of a particular nutrient, especially an essential nutrient. I haven't read that yet. 
You know, I haven't read an article that said man dies in an overdose of vitamin C. I haven't read that yet. You know, I'm not saying it can happen. It could happen. It could happen. But I haven't come across that yet. However, I did come across many news articles of people dying from opioids, Tylenol, aspirins, Levaquin, which is an antibiotic. Like 20,000 people died from Levaquin. The death toll may be higher. I was prescribed uh, Levaquin um, in 2011 when I was hospitalized for five days with a serious asthma attack. When I was discharged and I got home, I took the Levaquin antibiotics and hives all over my body. I'm talking even my butt. It was all over my body. I got hives and it was itchy and I wanted to rip my skin apart. That's how bad it was. Thank goodness um, I had um, I had Benadryl and I took Benadryl. My mother actually had Benadryl downstairs in her apartment. Thank God for that. That was a horrible side effect. By the way, that drug as of today continues to be in the market. Figure that one out, okay? I know, I know that 80 milligrams of vitamin C is not enough dosage to prevent deficiency diseases caused by a lack of vitamin C. How do I know that? Dr. Joe Wallach, one of my naturopathic heroes, agriculturist, pathologist. Dr. Wallach knows somewhat the recommended, excuse me, the recommended daily value for all essential nutrients. Dr. Wallach is the father of naturopathic medicine, in my opinion. Okay, in my opinion, he is the father of naturopathic medicine. I don't care what anyone says. He knows his his stuff. He knows his stuff. Okay, he is an expert in naturopathic holistic medicine and comparative pathology. How do I know? He got rid of my diseases. Okay, he knows how much dosage you need for maintenance and for the therapeutic dosage per body weight. I'll go through all of that in part two. By the way, don't you dare take a therapeutic dose uh, using any other nutritional supplement other than longevity. Most of those supplements online or in the stores and the vitamin stores are synthetic, most of them. Uh, maybe 30% of them are natural, okay? They have a lot of fillers. Most of them are chemicals, and you will get sick. Okay, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. I'm going to cover the brand. This is a bottle of selenium. As you can see, it says selenium. This selenium was $9.99 in the store. Okay, it was in, uh, I forgot which, uh, Dwayne Reed's or I think it was Walgreens is where I bought that. And the reason why I bought that is because I wanted to show my class, my workshops, that some of these supplements have bad chemicals. You know what that stuff has? It has soy and it has wheat. It says it right on the bottle. Right on the bottle. Contains soy and wheat. Okay? So, you got to be careful when you buy these uh, supplements. Now, back to vitamin C. The total vitamin C for that tofu omelet breakfast was a total of 80 milligrams. I strongly believe 80 milligrams is way too low to prevent diseases for an adult. Okay? I think it's way too low to sustain your health. I personally do not believe it's the vegan food that's making the vegans sick, per se. The vegan food is not making them sick. In other words, I don't think it's the ingredient in the food. It's the lack of nutrients that is causing the vegans to get very ill. It's the lack of nutrients that is not present in the vegan food, and it's potent. There is potency, excuse me. I always have trouble saying that word. Potency. It's, in fact, all foods that are lacking in nutrients, especially the essential nutrients, are weak in dosage. Milk, carrots, you name it. They're weak in dosage. Now, think about this. This is something interesting to think about. You are eating a meal that is low in nutrition. Did you know your body steals nutrients for other areas of your body? Did you know that? For instance, the thyroid may need some calcium, and it steals it from your bones because they can't find uh, calcium in your bloodstream. Why? Because you're deficient in calcium. 
So also your cardiovascular system needs all 90 essential nutrients, especially calcium, to keep your arteries healthy and other parts of the cardiovascular system. Calcium, by the way, is not just for bones and for joints, okay? As many people think. Many people think, that, oh, calcium is good for bones. Yes, it is, but it's also uh, for the heart. The heart needs it, and the artery needs it as well. The arteries need calcium as well. In fact, all organs need calcium. They all need the 90th century nutrients. Um, how many bones do we have? We have about 200 or 206. I forget how many bones. And I forget how many joints that we have. Now, the body is going to take, the thyroid is going to need some, uh, some uh, calcium. So what does the body do? It steals calcium from your bones. That's why you need to fill up your body with the 90 essential nutrients to prevent the body from stealing nutrients. Okay? Plus, watch this. You're working out. You're doing exercise. You're playing sports. You're riding your bicycle. All of these activities deplete your nutritional tank. By the way, sex also depletes nutrition as well. You can drop dead from, have, from having sex. If you don't have enough selenium and other nutrients for your heart or your card or your cardiovascular system, what's that? Yeah, okay. I've read some news that some people died having sex. Okay. Now think. You did ingest. You didn't ingest enough calcium from your food. The body is stealing calcium. Plus, you're not supplementing enough calcium. You probably bought a cheap calcium supplement that is synthetic. And you probably thought that it was a good thing. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen um, when your bones and your joints are not getting enough calcium and the other nutrients? Here comes the pain, ladies and gentlemen. I, my hand hurts. I, my hip hurts. I, my legs. I, 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 I I'm in pain. Okay, everyone is now singing the I song. Okay, I, 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 I'm in pain all over. I, 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 I'm in pain all over. Okay, I got, I got a disco version for you. I call it the pain disco song. Whoa, whoa, I got a pain in my bones. Whoa, whoa, I got a pain in my bones. <laughs> Come on, everybody, sing with me, sing with me. Whoa, whoa, got a pain in my bones, whoa, whoa. I see it on Facebook all the time, people, people complaining. It's been three days. I've been with the shoulder pain, and my my RA, my arthritis is killing me today. I can't go shopping. I can't go bike riding. I can't have sex. I'm in pain. I've been on the nebulizer for three days. This freaking asthma is killing me. Folks, that was me. <laughs> okay? Thank you, Jesus, for the nutrients. Thank you, Lord, for the nutrients. I have 5,000 friends on Facebook. They're all sick and in pain, man. Ugh. They're all deficient in calcium and, and the 89 other nutrients the body requires. And now you're in trouble. You're in big trouble now. I go, wait, no, wait a second, this gets better. Hold on a second. No, 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 it gets better, okay? Then you go to the doctor because you're in pain and you're suffering and, and you want to end the pain, right? You get a blood test and a urine test and your doctor tells you that you have too much calcium, which may be very little, but he knows it's too much calcium, okay? He freaks out and scares the crap out of you and says, no more cheese for you, baby, no more cheese for you, buddy, okay? No more dairy for you. Oh, my God in heaven, you got too much calcium. You, 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 you have hypocalcemia, which is uh, too much calcium. And you're going to start getting uh, kidney stones. Oh, my God. That's baloney, by the way, folks. And what does your doctor prescribe? What does he prescribe? A diuretic to, so you can pee all that calcium out. You take that diuretic and you're going to pee out the rest of the calcium that's in your nutritional tank or in your bloodstream. And now you're singing the song, the pain song. Whoa, whoa, I got a pain in my bones. 
Come on, everybody, sing with me. Whoa, whoa, I got a pain in my bones. Ay, Padre Santo. You know what? I'm going to end it here. I'm not even going to continue. I'm going to move on with the next topic. Wake up, people. Stop watching Spider-Man. Stop watching Star Wars. You're getting sick and you're going to die. No, 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 no. First, you're going to first you're gonna get sick. Then you're going to suffer. Then you're going to die. Very sad. Very sad. Do you know why plants and vegeta uh, vegetation are deficient in nutrients, especially minerals? Uh, like I said, it's modern agriculture and farming. The farmers are spraying herbicide, pesticides, all kinds of Roundup, which causes cancer. And it's getting into the soil, killing the organism that's in the soil. The organism pre-digests the nutrients and feeds the nutrients to the plant so it can be easily absorbed by the plant. That process is called photosynthesis. Do you remember that? Photosynthesis uh, from high school, junior high school, actually, biology 101. The food, whether it's a crop, whether it's a potato, oranges, fruits, vegetables, uh, they're not getting the essential nutrients in their proper quantity thanks to modern agriculture. You can thank Monsanto for that, DuPont and all these biotechnical companies for screwing up our soil. They are destroying our soil. And you are supporting them by purchasing their GMO products laced with all these chemicals that gave you the sickness in the first place. You are spending your hard-earned money on food that is getting you sick. Wake up. You need to wake up, folks. What was wrong with the way our ancestors farmed? Okay, our ancestors did it nature's way, God's way. Now, here comes man thinking that they can do it better than God. No, you can't. You can never do it better than God. Wake up, you imbecilic fool. Wake up. Look what you have created. I hope you are proud, Monsanto, DuPont, and all you biotech companies for contributing to our society. Thanks but no thanks. I'll eat my food the way God intended it, naturally, organically, and non-genetically modified. Gracias. But the quicker you people can get rid of these foods, the quicker the healing process will begin. Stop consuming these freaking foods, period. Okay? You know, I know what you're all going through, okay? I've been down that road with 14, 15 diseases. You want to stop the suffering? Get rid of these foods, okay? Let's start with that. Clean up your body. Give it a try. Give it a try. Let's see where it takes you, okay? Anyway, let's go back to veganism and vitamin C. Sorry, folks, about that rant. But more than half of Americans are sick, man. This is insanity, okay? All righty. Quickly, let me... Let me go through this and I'm going to close. I'm going to close the video. How many times have I said I'm going to close this video? <laughs> Speaking of vitamin C and veganism, um, do you know the disease that is linked to a deficiency of vitamin C? Uh, what disease will develop if you are deficient in vitamin C? It's called scurvy. Scurvy is caused by a deficiency of vitamin C, and it's a horrible skin disorder, horrible. Uh, you get bleeding gums. Horrible rashes, your gums start to bleed, your teeth get rotten and fall off, all from a lack of vitamin C. Uh, that's why I take 26 milligrams of vitamin C every day. <laughs> I don't want that scurvy caca. <laughs> I don't want that caca. <laughs> I want to avoid that crap, man. It's horrible. That's a horrible way to die with that scurvy um, disease. Um, this is my opinion or hypothesis, if you will. Again, I'm entitled to my own opinion and speculation. As I stated before, I watched a lot of videos from former vegans all over the world. In many of their testimonies, after 6 to 12 months of practicing veganism, many of them would start to become very itchy. That's one of the symptoms that they were getting. Very itchy. And they were also getting sore gums, teeth were getting loose, bleeding gums, and rotten teeth, plus many other symptoms as well, like joint pains and brain fog, 
very moody, emotional problems. They will get IBS, which is iterable bowel syndrome. Um, I think many who practice veganism for a period of time and they begin to get very itchy and bleeding sores and teeth getting run. What do you think that sounds like? It sounds like scurvy. It's the ex vegans are describing in their videos the exact symptoms verbatim of scurvy. I'm convinced it's scurvy. Someone needs to research that, man. Again, that's my opinion. That's just my opinion. Many ex vegans claim that they felt good when they started the vegan diet, they felt energized. They felt terrific. Uh, veganism may feel good with plant foods that they're consuming. Many vegans eat a lot of fruits, and it feels good. It feels good after a while. The natural sugar from the from the fruit is giving you that natural energy that makes you feel great and energized. But after a while, your body is going to say, "I'm missing a lot of nutrients." And I am going to break down on you. And very soon, I am going to shut down unless you fix me. Many vegans become diabetic. Okay? They get type 2 uh, diabetes. The reason why they become diabetic, because you, as a vegan, or anybody who becomes type 2 diabetic, like myself, you are deficient in two trace minerals. And that's why you became diabetic. There are two important minerals. Actually, there's several, but there are two major players here, vanadium and chromium, and plus other minerals that helps vanadium and chromium to uh, effectively absorb your body. That's why you need 90, 90, ladies and gentlemen, 90, plus a few other um, uh, fatty acids, omega-3, omega-6. You need 90. Now, you know how I got rid of my type 2 diabetes, <laughs> vanadium and chromium and a few minerals. I forgot the other minerals. I have them all written down um, because I'm doing a study on all 90. I got about maybe 70 minerals and vitamins uh, and amino acids. What, what are their benefits and which one works with the other one and which one has to be taken with this one? I freaking love it. This is so much fun when you're studying these minerals. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, the, the magic number is 90. Your body is beginning to shut down. Your body is giving you warnings. It's like the check engine light of your automobile. It's an indicator telling you something is wrong with the car, right? Check engine, check engine, check engine, check engine. Your car is telling you something is wrong. Your body has a check engine light too. It's called symptoms. It begins with a little pain here, a little pain there, uh, and your, your body is becoming out of whack. Or the itching over here, there's all is all out of whack. Your 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 respiratory systems it starts to break down. Your um, you name it, man. Uh, what other system? The skeletal system is also breaking down. Your your body parts are breaking down. You're having a problem. You're in trouble. Okay, you need to do something about that. Your body is telling you, fix me, damn it. I'm sick. Fill me up with the 90 essential nutrients. My God, you vegans are injecting yourselves with vitamin B12 and all kinds of stuff. You're injecting it with, with a syringe. Our ancestors didn't inject themselves with vitamins or injected their livestock. This is madness, folks. Our ancestors ate food for their nutrition, okay? Why am I sick? Why am I getting sick? Why do I feel like crap, okay? You guys ask yourself these questions. Then you go to the doctor, and here come the drugs. Now you go to the doctor, and he prescribes you drugs. Then you go to the gym because you think it's the right thing to do. Maybe I'm out of shape. Maybe if I, if I work out, I'll probably feel better. I'm just out of shape. Yeah, you're out of shape because your body is undernutrified. Your body is starting to shut down. And if you go to the gym undernutrified, you're going to kill yourself. 400,000 people die in gyms per year. By the way, I didn't step foot in a gym to accomplish 125 pounds that I lost. I didn't do that going to the gym. I just simply with nutrition and getting rid of the 12 daily foods, okay? 
You don't go to the gym when you're sick. You go to the gym when, when you are healthy. Okay. Plus, I don't believe in gyms. Okay. You're putting too much stress in the body, especially the heart, and that's very dangerous. What do you think is the solution for not only vegans? What is the solution for all who are sick and suffering and dying? What is the solution? Folks, everyone, including vegans, vegetarians, uh, carnivores, uh, omnivores, I don't care who you are, everyone must now mandatory supplement the 90th century nutrients. Not injected with a syringe, orally. You take it orally. Your digestive system needs to receive all 90 nutrients from your mouth down to your stomach, then to the intestines where the villi of the intestine continues the digestive process, and from there the bloodstream, and then from there the body distributes the nutrients to the glands, the bladder, the organs, the gums, your bones, your joints, your hormones, everywhere your body will say thanks. I needed those nutrients. And like I said, in the Bronx, everything is going to be copacetic. Okay? <laughs> everything is going to be copacetic. You are deficient in nutrients. That's all, folks. All of you. Except for me. My body is always full of the essential nutrients. <laughs> I take it every day, morning and dinner time. I used to take it four times a day because I was very sick and I weighed like 400 pounds. Um, soon I will be taking it once a day, the maintenance dosage. Pretty soon. I just have one disease that I'm dealing with. Um, I lied. I actually have uh, one more disease. I still have a slight case of chondromalacia patella on my right knee. My left knee is fully healed. However, my right knee is, I'm still in the healing process. I can hop up and down the stairs, uh, with my left knee, also, I don't get much pain at night like I used to during the cold season. The winter season, my chondro Malaysia gets bad. I can I, I, I can actually walk straight, you know, without limping, but um, I'm having a little trouble walking up and down the stairs. Uh, but I have to lose another 50 pounds, and that will also improve the chondro Malaysia and I'll probably get rid of it. Not bad for... Uh, uh, a person with a substandard education from the Bronx with a C average got rid of um, 14 diseases. I still got one to go. Not bad, right? Three things you all need to do. Get rid of the 12 deadly foods immediately, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, today before your health worsens. Number two, take the 90th century nutrients according and appropriately for your body weight especially if you have some illness. Give the body what it's craving for. It is, it is craving for nutrients. Feed it. Remember, the 90th century nutrients are not present in our food. It is now mandatory to supplement. Number three, maintain an ORAC score of 100,000. ORAC, O-R-A-C. ORAC stands for oxygen radical absorbance capacity. <laughs> Almost forgot. Oxygen radical absorbance capacity. It is how antioxidants are measured in your food and also supplements. I keep my ORAC score 150,000. Okay. And that's going through the, um, that's taking the 90th century nutrients that has a nice high ORAC score as well. Plus, I also um, take one tablespoon of cinnamon on my coffee every morning, nutmeg. I add nutmeg on my uh, coffee. Those are all high in Rx scores, antioxidants. They're very high in antioxidants. Also, my gluten-free rice pudding, I add some cinnamon as well. Um, I eat organic dark chocolate. That's also high in uh, Rx score. Um, also red wine, red wine, especially good red wine. Not that cheap stuff for $2.99. You got to get a bottle that's like 20 or higher, uh, red wine. Um, another thing I want to address to all vegans, this is very important before I continue. And I close this video. I keep saying I'm going to close this video. Another thing I want to address to all vegans and vegetarians and carnivores and, om and omnivores, all of you, 
you all need to stop nagging each other, okay? Stop the harassment. You need to stop nagging each other. I'm sorry, but I'm going to get a little theological here, okay? I'm going to get a little theological here. Paul the Apostle told the Roman church, he addressed the Roman church in one of his epistles, Romans 14, 2, of chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. Quote, and let me quote it verbatim. I'm sorry, again, I'm not prepared here. Here it is, Romans chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. Quote, one man's faith allows him to eat everything, but another man eats only vegetables. The man who eats everything must not look down on him who does not. And the man who does not eat everything must not look down or condemn the man who does, for God has accepted him. End of quote. In other words, carnivores, stop nagging the vegetarians and the vegans. Vegans and vegetarians, stop nagging the carnivores and the omnivores. Veg vegetarian, eat your carrots. Do not stir fry it with oils. Make sure that carrot is organic and non-GMO. Stay away from the 12 deadly foods. Take your 90th century nutrients and zip it. Callate. Zip it. Vegans, Eat your tofu. Do not fry it. Make sure it's non-GMO and organic. Stay away from the 12 deadly foods. Take your 90 essential nutrients and zip it. Callate. Callate. Carnivores, eat your chicken. Make sure it's organic. Don't fry it. Stay away from the 12 deadly foods. Take your 90 essential nutrients and zip it. Callate. Omnivores, Eat whatever the heck you want. You want to eat a snake? You want to eat an alligator? Don't fry it. Abstain from the 12 deadly foods. Take your 90 essential nutrients and zip it. Shh, callate. Okay? Everyone, take your 90. Take your 90 essential nutrients and y'all going to be all right. Y'all going to be all right. Everyone, eat whatever the hell you want. Just abstain from the food that's damaging your body and preventing nutrient absorptions. Okay? It's that simple. It's not rocket science, guys. This is not rocket science. This is not rocket science. I'm saying this with a loving heart. Stop nagging each other. Okay? Stop it. Okay, folks. Now back to me. And now I am going to close. I got about, well, I got about a month, another 10 more bullet points here. 